It's time for another tale from the glass guarded world, with Brian as Paxton the human cleric and fighter, Danielle as Athelflaed the halfling rogue and monk, Ashley as Terra Dane the human fighter, Chris as Aster Fortuna the half elf rogue and bard, and me, Mike, as the DM. After exploring the area immediately around the Hall of Worlds, the escapees from World 83 have discovered a secret room at the rear of the Hall of Scholars. This large room contained several crates, which Terra was about to pry open, but she found her crowbar stuck to it. Pseudopods sprouted from the crates and two mimics attacked Terra and Paxton. If they're going to find out what's going on in this ancient ruin, they're going to have to defeat these mimics first. is not here though i should remind you epilema is back uh waiting for you on the other side of the magic door you told her to wait for about an hour aster what did you get 14 and tara one athelflaed yeah six six paxton 18 wow the first round is when surprise occurs and you're surprised none of you detected in advance that these are mimics quite yes apparently yes so the first round Normally, Paxton would go first. However, this first round, uh, everyone is surprised except for the Mimics. So the Mimics each get to go. So the Mimics, um, one of them is uh, going to attack. Uh, actually, they're both going to attack Terra. Are they? Are there two of them? There are two of them. There are these two of these crates. And one of them has a crowbar stuck to it now. Both of them have these uh, large pseudopods that have reached out of them and are getting ready to, to give... Terra, a nice hug. So the first one attacks Terra. Oh my, it's a critical hit. Natural yeah. 20. And the second one, I'll just go ahead and roll. It also hits you. They both hit you. Hmm, that's interesting. With my AC at 19 now? Yeah. Oh my god. They both hit you. One rolled a 20 and one rolled an 18. So. But that, my AC is 19 now. Well, uh, that's just the roll. And then oh, on top yeah, of that, they get they get a plus five to hit. So the totals were a natural twenty and then a, t- a twenty three. So Tara got hit twice. Yikes! So bludgeoning damage first. Fourteen points of bludgeoning damage, and you are adhered. So that means that they have basically both grappled you, right? They're both grabbing you. Uh-huh. That's a little awkward. Oh yeah. They're both kind of pulling on you from opposite directions now. I feel very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is uh, the it's mimics. Really persuasive. I'll tell them not to. Or, oh, okay. You can try to talk them out. Of it. <laughs> tell them you don't taste good. All right. That is the first round. Then. So, the... so it's just fourteen overall. Yeah, fourteen. Okay. Fourteen, and you're grappled by both of them. All right, cool. You're double grappled. Now it is the second round of combat, and now everyone can actually act. So Paxton, it is your turn. Uh, how bad does Terra look after taking fourteen uh, points of damage? She. Yeah, she's, she's pretty like, tough. bloodied. This is not a great position, but yeah. I mean... Yeah, she could take some more of that. <laughs> uh, I think having seen that happen and seeing um, Terra get adhered to by the Mimics, uh, Paxton's first instinct is going to be to try to grab Terra and pull her away from the Mimics, okay. especially seeing that she got hurt. Okay, so, so what you're attempting to do then is help her break the grapple. Yes. All right, so that means that on her turn... Tara could try to break the grapple, and you would be giving her advantage, basically. Okay. Is that what you'd like to do? Yes, and that takes my whole action. Uh, yeah, if you want to okay. help, the helping action means that it, it takes your action. All right, yes, that's what I would like to do. All right, do. Paxson's going to try to f- help Tara get herself free. Okay. Now it is Aster's turn. Aster, you're not quite as close by. You are over. You were overlooking at the uh, chests and cabinets full of clothing, full of robes and things, but you have quite clearly seen this fight break out between... Two crates and Terra. And can how far am I from getting to her? Can oh, I get to her see. pretty easily? You are, you're probably about 50 feet away. 50 feet? Yeah. But you can move 30 feet and around. Yes, I might have something. You um, can dash as well. 
Yeah, although you could take a full round movement and get right up next to them if you want. Oh, darn it. So when I attack, I can my speed increases by 10 feet when I'm making a, a mobile flourish Okay. of some kind. That would get you 40 but feet. But that would only get me 40 feet, and I can't slash anybody at that right. distance. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 30 feet. All right. And I'm going to target one of them, and I'm going to use dissonant whispers to one of the mimics. All right. And I want to say to the mimic... Mimic, I don't know if you can talk, but get your hands off, Tara. And then I, I'm going to, that's what I say. <laughs> All right. And it's, I believe, a... It's a saving throw. A wisdom 16. It fails. All right. It does uh, psychic damage, is that right? Um, I believe so, yes. How much damage? 3d6. Wow, that's pretty good. Nine. Nine damage. Nine damage. All right. Uh, the Mimic doesn't like that. It doesn't let go of Terra, though. <laughs> That's uh, Aster's turn. Ethelflaed. Uh, I'm not sure what Ethelflaed was doing prior to this. I don't know. Where... Oh, I guess you were looking at the lamp. So you're over near that table. So you're about 40 feet away. Okay. Then I'm going to try to hit it with the crossbow. All right. The same one that Aster was uh, whispering at? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, 19. Yeah, that's a hit. Nine points. Wow. This, uh, this poor Mimic, you guys are really beating up on it. Oh, yeah, the poor thing. Don't feel uh, bad all right, for the well, Mimic. Well, the Mimics get to go. Um, <laughs> they both have Terra grappled, and that means that they get an advantage on attacks against her now. Um, so both of them sort of pull themselves forward and attempt to chomp on uh, on Terra as, they, as the crates sort of open up to reveal these big toothy maws. Uh, the first one attacks Terra, attempts to bite her, and succeeds. And the second one, second one, you are able to sort of twist away from it, um, and it does not succeed in biting you. But the first one bites you, and it can does. I, What's can that? Can I repost the second one, the one that missed? Sure. You take 11 points of piercing and acid damage. Okay. Okay. And so now I'm attacking the one that missed. Okay. So it's uh, 15. To hit? Yes. That's a hit. Nice. They're not actually that hard to hit. Uh, damage is 10. 10. Wow. So 10 points of damage to the second Mimic now. Now they're both injured. Uh, they're both making loud uh, uh, hissing noises, and uh, they're grumbling. And so is Terra. <laughs> Terra is hissing back at them. All right. And that brings us to Terra. It is now officially your turn. Paxson is, is helping you to uh, escape. Now they impose automatic disadvantage on attempts to escape if you're grappled. And you can only try to get away from one of them per turn. So your choice is... Do you want to remain grappled? You would no longer have disadvantage on a grapple on a, attempting to escape a grapple because Paxton's helping you. However, I just have regular. You uh, I'm going to just straight up try roll. to break. You're like going to try to break of one of them. Okay, great. Go ahead and roll either athletics or acrobatics. All right, and that is if we're doing the math in the head. It's okay. twelve. Twelve. <laughs> you just barely break athletics. free. Uh, which one are you breaking free from? The one that's more badly injured or the one that's barely injured? Badly. Badly. All right, so you break free of the one that is badly injured. It is now, uh, so Tara is free of that. I should have done that the opposite way. Whoops. What's that? I should have done that the opposite way. <laughs> oh, well. Um, Paxton, it is your turn again. Hmm. I She's think still I'm, grappled by one of them. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to continue to uh, keep pulling on her to try to get her away because I think these things look really dangerous in close quarters, and maybe we should try to get some distance and hammer away at them with some space between us. All right. So I keep, keep pulling on her. All right, you keep giving her advantage on her attempt to escape from the next one. All right, Aster, it's your turn. Um, how is it grappling her? Is it like weird, like tentacle things? Yeah. Around? So this big—it looks like a crate, but suddenly this wood-colored, like arm, reaches out and sort of wraps around her and also sticks to her. So uh, it's sort of wrapped around her and is stuck to her. And you can see that 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 crowbar is also still stuck to the side of this uh, this fake crate. Since Terra is binded, she can't impose um, advantage for a sneak attack, can she? Um, she's within five feet. That counts. It still counts even though yeah, she's Yeah, it not... still counts. Okay. So would Paxton be? Yeah, Paxton helping. would also oh, you, count. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, you're helping her. You could do a sneak attack. Okay, I would like to do that and a defensive flourish on the one that's 
holding onto Terra. Okay. To slash at the arm that's holding onto Terra to see if I can do enough damage to okay. sever it. Make an attack. That does not hit, I don't think. It's going to be a 10. No, 10 does not hit. Okay. The arm sort of swings away from you um, while maintaining a grip on Terra. So I'm afraid that misses. Okay, so then with my scimitar, I'm going to slash at it again with the defensive flourish again. All right. Let's see if that Is there an happen. offhand penalty? How does that work? No, because I have uh, two... Two weapon fighting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Those rolls are horrible. That was worse than the first one. Okay. All right, so Aster, uh, I'm afraid, misses twice. A- Athelflaed... Um, I'm, I'm going to try again with a crossbow. All right. Which one are you aiming at? The one that's more badly hurt or the one that's holding Terra and is less badly hurt? Uh, the one that's holding Terra. Okay. Yeah, so 10. I'm afraid that, that misses. It is now the Mimic's turn. So the one Mimic that is grappling Terra attempts to bite her. It still has advantage on this attack. And it hits her. So you take 11 points of damage from that bite. That's quite the bite. Yes. Tara's now looking pretty chomped on. She's looking pretty rough. And the other one attempts to hit and grapple her again, but she manages to move away from it. It is unable to get a hold of her again. So it is- I'm gonna attack it. You attack the one that missed? Yeah. All right. Is that a repost? A repost, right. Another one. I got more superiority to die. Uh, This time it's a 21. That is a hit, quite easily. As it attempts to swing the pseudopod down at you, you swing at the pseudopod. Damage is uh, eight. That brings us uh, to Terra, your actual turn now. There's one that is still grappling you and one that has failed to do so and is injured. Uh, I'm going to break free of the grapples since uh, Paxton's right. helping me. Make an athletics or acrobatics check. Uh, so it's seven plus three plus three is 13. It manages to maintain its grip. You did not break free of this one. It's keeping a firmer grip on you than the other one did. So you are still grappled by this one, but not by the, the more injured one. Paxton, it is your turn. Oh, boy. She just failed to break free of the second mimic. I shall kill it. And she's also (laughs) getting pretty badly wounded at this point. Yeah, I feel like... hmm, I'm going to try to heal her because she looks like she's kind of... She's bleeding. Yeah, she's taken on a lot of damage, so this might be the appropriate thing to do. So I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on her. All right. So I get that bonus for being a life domain. So yep. that is, you're healed for 10 HP. All right. That's almost as much as they bit me for last time. Yeah, <laughs> this this might be a, a losing war. <laughs> uh, Aster, it's your turn. How badly does she look still? Or does she look good, like um, better now? She, she looks says, she... kill it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I'm just going to go straight in. All right. So Which I one get... are you attacking? The badly injured one that is not grappling her or the less bad, less badly injured one that is grappling her? The less badly injured one, right. and again, I'm trying to slash the All arm. Right. Um, I'm going to try the, the sneak attack and defensive flourish, and if I miss, I don't have to use the bardic inspiration for it. Let's see if I can hit it this time. 17 plus... That's a hit. Okay. Okay. So that one was sneak attack and the bardic... Inspiration for the defensive flourish. Um, and it will be. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, 11 plus 7. Wow. So 18 points of damage? Yes. And then it will add plus 5 to my um, armor class wow. for that turn. So I'm going to be 19. Okay. And then I will slash at it again with my scimitar. See if I hit it with that. Um, 11 plus uh, 6. That's a hit. All righty. That would be uh, an 8. All right. Uh, you slash at this tentacle, and it starts to cut through, but then some more mimic sort of flows into the gap that you've made in this tentacle, so it doesn't let go. However, you did a large amount of damage, and of the two of the, the mimics, now this one is in much worse shape than the first one was. Athelflaed, it is your turn. Currently, Terra is gripped by the uh, second Mimic, which is now the more badly injured one. And then there's another, the first Mimic that uh, she broke free of. That one is still trying to grab her, but it hasn't succeeded. So the one that has her, um, how far away am I at this point? Oh, uh, if you haven't moved, you're still, I guess, 40 feet away. 40 feet, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and try with a crossbow again. 12. That is a hit. Oh, uh, actually 16. Oh, yep, 16 is a hit. Nine. 
Nine points of damage on the second Mimic again. Mm -hmm. All right. This one is not looking good. Not looking good at all. And it is, unfortunately, the Mimic's turn. Uh, now, they can't really run away. So instead, this Mimic is just going to try to take a chomp out of Terra. And it still has advantage. And what's your armor class? It's 19. 19. Uh, it misses you. Yeah. It fails to chomp onto you. Uh, and the I first... do it again. What's that? You're going to do another repost? <laughs> yeah. All right. That's great. It's <laughs> uh, a 14 to hit. Uh, that's a hit. Oh, sweet. And damage is... Ooh, that's a lot. Okay, 16. Oh, you chop off the tentacle and then uh, stab into this crate, and it just starts to melt. Yeah. It just turns into a pile <laughs> of gray goo. You also notice that unlike in your own world, when this creature dies, there's no gray mist that rises up from it and floats away. It just dies. Mm. Uh, however, the other mimic still gets to attack you. Actually, it's going to take a swing at Aster. What's your armor class now? 19. 19. The mimic is unable to land an attack on you. With your defensive flourish and your higher armor class, uh, you simply bat aside the pseudopod and it is uh, unable to grab onto you. Tara, it's your official turn now. Wait, there's only one alive now, Only right? one left. All right, yeah, I'm going to attack that one. Uh, that's a 13. That hits. Okay. Mimics are easy to hit. Ten damage. Uh, okay. This one is still swinging that pseudopod around. Extra attack. All right, second attack. Uh, <laughs> 25. <laughs> that's definitely a hit. Eight. Damage. All right, and that has not killed it, but it is now looking pretty badly wounded. That is uh, Terra's turn. Paxton, it's your turn now. Okay, so uh, Paxton puts his shield up, and he's going to try to charge this thing into the wall. So he runs into it full force and smacks it with his uh, Mace of Selfless Vampirism. Okay. So that is going to be... Uh, that's a 19 to hit. That's a hit. All right. So that's five damage. All right, and you're directing half of that rounded down to Terra, I'm guessing? Yes. And then I'm also so Terra, going... Terra, you get two more hit points back. Sorry. Yes. yes. Uh, and then I'm going to use my Shield Master Shove. Uh, if you take an a attack action on your turn, you can use a bonus action to try to shove a creature within five feet of you with your shield. So I'm basically trying to press this thing up against the wall okay. so that I'm behind the shield so that if it's going to adhere to anyone, it's me. Uh, okay, so you make a strength athletics check contested by the target's athletics or ac acrobatics check. All right. All right. That roll was a 10. Uh, it got a 23. Well, that's more than 10. Yes. Yes, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, you run into it with your shield and sort of bounce off of it. And it's apparently stuck to the floor. So it's not going anywhere. Am I still imposing myself between it and anyone else? Uh, you are between it and Terra if you want to be, yes? Yeah, that's where I want to end okay. my, my action. All right. Uh, Paxton is sort of standing in front of this mimic now. Aster, it's your turn. I want to get, like, try to get the rapier in between the sword and the mimic. So, okay. Just finesse it in there. In between Paxton and the mimic? Yeah. And All right, then... so you step around a little bit to the side and try to stab at it. Go ahead. Let's see. That's an 18 plus. That's a hit. And so that one, I'm just doing my attack and sneak attack. All right. And that will be eight damage. Okay. And then I will slash at it again with the scimitar and do a defensive flourish. How does it look? It is in really rough shape. I'm not going to use the defensive flourish. I'm okay. It's yeah. it's uh, starting to ooze stuff out of it. And that's a hit. It's 17 plus. Yep, that's a hit. And, <laughs> darn it. That was really bad. Four damage. Four damage? Uh-huh. You killed it. All right. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, this one also <laughs> turns into a gray goo and just sort of melts onto the floor. And now there are two piles of gray goo here on the floor. How many yeah. crates are in the room? Three crates. I ain't loon any more crates. There's, but, another, uh, there's another crate sitting behind these two piles of goo. Is, uh, is my crowbar Your anywhere? crowbar is sitting in this pile of goo. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick it up and try and wipe it off. Okay, the goo just sort of drips off of it. Uh, uh, anyone else want to try? We, we, should, we should find things in the room that aren't bolted down and throw them at the crates and see if they <laughs> stick. That's a good idea. Okay, I take my hand axe. Uh-huh. 
and I throw it at one of the crates. All right, there's only the one crate left. Oh, okay. There, there were three. Gotcha. Two of them were mimics. You don't know about the third one. You throw, throw your hand axe at it. Make an attack roll just to make sure you don't hit the wall or something. 16. All right, so it slams into the crate with a wooden cracking noise. It's just a crate. All right, we're good. <laughs> All right. I, I go right. get my hand axe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just a crate, and you open it up, and it's full of spoiled foodstuffs. Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I search. <laughs> I investigate my spoiled food stuff. All right, you could search. Make a perception check. Unless you're trying to learn something about it, in which case I'd say make an investigation check. No, 13. Uh, again, it's, it's spoiled food. It looks like this is fish that has, uh, a dried fish that has eventually somehow gotten some moisture in it and gone bad. Smells pretty awful. There's maybe uh, uh, some piles of salt that might be useful. But other than that, it's, it's really, there's nothing useful in, in this crate. I kick the crate in anger. Okay. <laughs> what else is around crate. the room? Uh, so done? other things that were in the room, there's that big septogram. There was a table next to it with a lantern that Athelflaed took. There was the book on the table that had uh, sigil, sequence, uh, sigil sequences in it that could be used to move from one teleporter to another if you have the right spell, uh, which I don't think any of you do. Uh, there's a table to the south with some stuff on it. There's a stairwell to the south. Uh, there are some benches. You've pretty much looked at everything from the middle of the room to the north, and then to the south end of the room, there's a table you haven't really looked at, and the stairwell you haven't really looked at. Got it. And Let's so go look the at stairwell goes. Oh, yeah, the stairwell goes down. So as we're, as we're walking to the stairwell, uh, Paxton is trying to assess how bad uh, Tara looks after that fight. Oh, she's, um, she's not looking her best. Uh-huh. Um, you know, she's... She might have a little bit of a, a funny walk going on. Um, you know, she looks... Paxton is going to walk up behind her and trying to not make her feel bad about taking so much damage from the battle. Pat her on the shoulder, and that's going to be a cure wounds. Okay. Uh, so that is 12 HP. Wow. Now she's in pretty good shape. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so things on the south side of this room, um, let's see. Uh, also, I, I mentioned there are two suits of armor, full plate armor standing uh, on the west western wall, and it's just armor. It's not animated or anything. It's just uh, some old-looking suits of armor that are sort of on stands. I kind of feel like we should go look at the table, see what's on it. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so the table, on the Maybe table... Maybe throw an axe at it first. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it's just a table. Uh, on the table, you see uh, a, a pile of playing cards that have been scattered around. Uh, they look like they've been there a long time, um, but they're not rotten or anything. Uh, they're not about to fall apart and crumble to pieces, but there are some playing cards. Uh, there's a wooden trencher, uh, which is uh, basically a wooden plate. A glass pitcher. This is empty. Uh, there are four chairs, and that's all there is. Uh, the playing cards, uh, I inspect them to see if they're a full set. Um, yeah, it's a f well, actually, you, you don't know if it's a full set, because this is a set of cards the likes of which you have never seen before. This is not similar to the playing cards that you are used to from your world. These are suits of cards that you don't recognize. They don't seem familiar to you. So you're not sure how many cards there are supposed to be in this deck. Uh, I look at him and I'm like, this, this set's broken. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. leave him. I don't know how many how many cards are in a deck in where you where you usually come from. I don't know how big is a deck of cards. Is it fifty two or is it it's something else? Fifty two. I mean, normally it's fifty two in yeah. our world, yeah. but I'm asking in your world that you came from, how many cards were in a deck? Uh, I don't know. Fifty. Fifty. <laughs> All right, a good round number. Well, this one has fifty three. Hmm. Well, that's outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's a wizard game. You know what? I, I like card games. I'll uh, I'll put them all together and put them in my pocket, and maybe we can make up a new game. All right. The stairwell. You walk over to the stairwell. This is a stone spiral staircase with giant steps 10 feet wide. It descends from the southeast corner of this room. Unfortunately, it has been blocked with stone and wood rubble that appears to have been haphazardly tossed here. It probably wouldn't take more than a few hours of hard work to remove it by hand, depending on how far down it goes. Hmm. Should we do that? I mean, Where we should, but like we should. stone rubble came from? Yeah, you don't know. We definitely need to tell Epilema, though, to not leave after an hour. 
Yeah, about how long do we think we've been down here? Oh, maybe 20 minutes. You've been in this room? Hmm. Maybe 30. And how long does it look like it would take to move all that rubble, you said? A couple hours. A couple hours. If you're all working at it. Definitely more than 40 minutes. <sighs> uh... You know, I bet Epilema is great at moving rocks out. Just uh, watch <laughs> the door. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think she would be a big help for that. So if... Yeah. Um... I'm wondering not if trying the... to get out of the work or anything. <laughs> I'm wondering if all the rubble <laughs> came from like the actual room itself, or you don't see any signs of any stones having been removed in this room. Didn't we read something uh, at some point in one of them rooms about uh, you know, like maybe they? I don't know. I, I, Tara's trying to remember <laughs> things. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's rough. She definitely remembers a dorm room. One dorm room had some stuff on it with, like, a journal. It was writing. Yeah, that was Rickert's room. Yeah. I think Brian has that. Yeah. Uh, Rickert. Well, let me just look through and see if there's anything about uh, rocks. What, well, what was it about the journal entry that uh, you remembered? I feel like I feel like there was something about not, you know, taking care of them or not doing something or I don't know. Read the journal. <laughs> Rickert, though it pains me, I have left the hall. None know when more ships shall land here. Mayhap I shall join the Urbanimars. No doubt they could use both sword and spell. I durst not ask you again because I know you wouldst say nay. You are stubborn and unforgiving, both intolerable and admiral. admirable. No doubt the gnomes will keep you fed. Let us hope that the wards and doors keep you safe. A wise man keepeth his dwimmer about him like his armor. I hope for your sake that the Strethok and his experiments remain below. I pray you, do not venture down, nor let up the aberrations below. Yeah, there we go. That yeah. that uh, experiments down there. Maybe uh maybe maybe the rubble's here for a reason. Ooh, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> can they get through though if we close out the that portal in between the walls. Wait, you want to trap us in here with it? No, 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 no. Trap them if somehow we open this and they come out. Is there a way to trap them in this room? Or are they just be? I, I'm just stay? saying that if we want to move all this rubble, Tara is taking a nice, long rest. <laughs> <laughs> in a safe place? Yeah, that preferably, yes. Yeah, yeah. That would be so lovely. Well, I, um, I feel so safe down here, you guys. <laughs> Could we find uh, maybe some of these gnomes? We've seen the footprints. I don't know how fresh they really are, but... We've seen the gnomes, and they're just look to us like statues, right? Yeah, I mean... Maybe the magic ran out. Yeah. Darn. You we know, can... we have a bunch of uh, you know unnamed NPCs just chilling. We could always tell them to move some rubble. Yeah. That's true. But the question is, if we move the rubble, are we going to find these aberrants on the other side? Yes, and that would put these civilians in danger. Yeah. But there's a city outside of this wall, right? A small town or village? Uh -huh. Maybe there's living creatures there. You want to put well, you them know in there danger? Are, you know there are cows. You heard oh, yeah, the cows. You're right. Okay, okay. We can ask around. Yeah. I, all right, so we wanted to make sure that this area was safe. So that our, our people could, like, hang out in here, like, spread out a bit. As long as they don't find this secret passage and decide to move a bunch of rubble, they're safe here, right? We killed the worm-like creatures. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, so, you know, maybe we could, you know, I don't know, take a nice rest and... But if we found that switch to, uh, you know... Uh, open that door. We found it pretty quickly. Like, what are the odds that other people would find that as well? Okay, well, we'll go clean this stupid stairwell then. No, no I'm not no, saying we should no, do that no, either. We shouldn't do that. We'll be we'll be exhausted and then attack. Yeah, the only thing that we know is that there are aberrants down here that we need. <laughs> like the letter says directly. I pray you, do not venture down. <laughs> <laughs> Nor let up the aberrations down. below. Okay. So. Well, wait, can we, 
Like, I'm kind of wondering why we came down here in the first place. I'm getting scared. <laughs> <laughs> Can we, uh, I would like to, to take a, well. Well, let's take a rest. And well, you you already me. had an, an eight-hour rest relatively recently. Well, yeah, but I just got my butt kicked. <laughs> <laughs> what about a short rest? You could take a short rest. Yeah, we're emotionally exhausted. Yeah, yeah. and maybe, maybe we can uh, we can check out the village and then you know uh, come back here yeah. later. Okay. Uh, deal okay. with the whole rock moving situation. All right, so you're taking a short rest. Mm -hmm. So for that fight, you each got 225 experience points. So add 225. And uh, what does that put each of you at in terms of experience? Uh, we might want to check in with uh, Epilima. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's his name? Uh, the wizard guy? Ogobar? Ogobar. We should check in with him. Um, yeah. I Yeah, let's go back to Epilima, I would say, and then Yeah, we're take a short she's rest. the one who's like immediately waiting for us, so we should tell her about the rocks that we got to move and uh and the yeah. Okay. So you go back out through the secret door. And into the, the the big hall with the throne, and Epilima's sitting on it, um, <laughs> drumming her fingers on it. She's way too small for it, but she hears you walking through, and she says, "Hey, hi there. Hey, hey would you find anything cool over there? Do I need to go through? What's uh, over there? Uh, we a bunch of mimics, but uh, we we killed them. Oh man, and I wasn't there. <laughs> this sucks. Ah, uh, but we got something way cooler now. What?" A stairway full of rocks. Uh, <laughs> well, are they like gold rocks or something? No, they're heavy. Oh, you can prove your strength so You want much. me to lift rocks in a stairway? Yeah. Does it go up? It does. Well, no, it goes down. You're going to have to go up as you take the rocks out. Wait, what? Hold on. You're asking me to move a bunch of rocks? Yeah. You like to work out, don't you? I do like to work out. That's yeah. true. You got me there. You know but, what an aberration is, Epilima? Uh, uh, sounds like a magic thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it is, but uh, you interested in finding out? Uh, I, I guess uh, what I want to know is uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> Apple Fudge scratches her head. <laughs> 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 yeah, see, she she knows she feels what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. What are we doing here? Saying. I mean, why do you want to go down? Is well, this not... like some kind of obsession with like, uh, like where we are? Or what, what? What? Does this have something to do with that Rickert guy? What? What's going on? Uh. Okay. So, we want to go down uh -huh. because. Yeah. There's supposed to be some scary stuff down there, uh, and we want to get rid of it. Oh, uh, well, you know, I like fighting stuff, you know. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, if we can clear the danger out of this area, then we can make it safe for all the other people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but, uh, is it, like, is it safe being, being just where it is right now? Well, I think we should leave it there, personally, for now, and uh -huh. get more information before... We use your mighty muscles, Epilema. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm all into the mighty muscle use. Yeah, for sure. But uh, <laughs> I'm also thinking, like, there's this whole world outside, and we heard cows, and, you know, uh, we saw some fields. Yes, and that's, that's it. That's what yes. we want to do. Epilema, do you trust all the other people, if they spread out here, to not find the switch? No. No way. <laughs> okay. No way, See, they're going to find problem. that switch. We're going to have to tell them about that switch and then tell them not to touch it. Uh, okay, and maybe we should also post a guard for the yeah, switch. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm All sure right. if you told Olgabar about the switch, yeah. he would become the captain switch protector. Yeah. Well, we want we want two guards, right? We want guards protecting the world, our world, and yeah. then a guard protecting this chair. Yeah, yeah, that sounds smart. Well, at, the, at this point, can't we uh, set guards at the gate? Because this area, other than the switch, and uh, there's nothing else bad, right, that we know of. Because we've kind of scouted the whole area. Yeah, you've Did scouted both anything? buildings in th entirely. Yeah. yeah. So we can really just kind of post uh, kind of a, a lookout, and we can post someone up at the switch and rotate them out. And then they have a job to do and also some area to spread out to. Should we arm them? Again, I'd like to figure that out. Should we arm at least ones that we trust? 
that can do the job. Because right now we have a strong woman in the frying pan. <laughs> Speaking of the ones we can trust, uh, all that stuff about guarding the gate implies that the only thing we have to worry about are the things in this world, and not necessarily the people who came with us. Well, there's Mandel, and I don't trust him. Yeah, do, you, do we want to leave our world unprotected from the likes of him? No, oh, we right. definitely need two guards posted. Okay, guard for the world, guard for the switch. Definitely. All right, that sounds smart. Gate. So, so we should we should go over and talk to Olgabar then. All It'd right. Be so funny if we did an interview of the of the civilians like American <laughs> Idol style. <laughs> Who is worthy of weapons? <laughs> it's a no right. for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk back over, I guess, to the uh, the Hall of Worlds. Yes. Yeah. You find the refugees in their little encampment that they've made, their little fortification they've made around uh, World 83 with the rubble. Uh, and as you approach, you hear someone say, who goes there? And Olga Bar says, shut up, you idiot. It's them. Can't you see who it is? <laughs> you come walking up and he says, so what did you find? What's going on? I tell him. All right. <laughs> you fill him in. Yeah, he, he agrees that uh, the switch is probably a good idea as something to guard. Because if there's a stairwell going down, and if you're planning to excavate it, then we probably don't want to uh, let out whatever's in there. Also, he's curious, and some of the other people there are, are curious as well about what is underground. Like, what is this place? Several people mentioned that they would like to have someone go investigate, but they don't want to do it. So if you guys are volunteering, they're all, all, all up for it. But Olgabar also, and several other people, also want to know where this place is. What's outside the walls of this fortress? Why do they keep hearing cows in the distance? Uh, what's going on? Yeah, well, so, wait, well, one thing at a time. <laughs> Calm down. Yeah, the whole crowd the is sort of murmuring. Yeah. Where are we? What are we doing? What should we do next? Okay. Are there places we can rest and be warm inside that other building? Yes, absolutely. So I, I catch onto that, and I talk loudly, I, and I tell them, you know, there are six dormitories, and a seventh place to sleep as well, actually. Sorry, seven? There us. are 50 of, no, three of us are dead. There are 47 of us. Well, two people can share one of the beds, so there are eight places to sleep. And you can sleep in rotation. Other people should probably be awake. Uh, but, you know, that we're going to get the tired, elderly, all those kind of people. They can go sleep right now, and then everyone else will get to sleep later. And, um, you know... We and uh, now I'm looking for people like um, faces that I might recognize uh -huh. or people who look strong who I think um, other than just Olgabar who can guard the world or who might be a good lookout. OK, you, you can uh, pick out a few people. Make a persuasion check. OK, this is basically going to determine how successful you are at persuading some skilled people to step forward and 12, 12. All right. So yeah, a couple people step forward and say they're willing to serve uh, guard duty. They look relatively capable. Other people are more eager just to go to a place that's not exposed to the freezing elements. I assume you're going to lead them over there? I guess Olgabar can do that. He's been over there already once before, right? Yes. Uh, has well, he? Wait, he no, he hasn't. The, the, no, he hasn't. We go outside. Oh, okay, like, you go he's outside. Been, he's been the weird way yeah. to the magical room, right. but we're, gonna, we're not going to show them that secret right. passage. We're going to okay. show them the outside way. Okay. Also, I'm kind of going to mention, like, you know, if you see, like, a little tiny gnome, if you could get our attention, we would like to talk to the gnome. Don't hurt the gnome if at all possible okay everyone seems willing to follow your instructions so they set up camp they leave a few people two people is that what you want to do two people guarding world 83 yeah so that they're not bored okay yeah who are they like do i trust them do they look um, okay uh make an insight check <laughs> 10 yeah so the lady with a frying pan is there she looks pretty serious and then there's a uh like a young guy everyone basically encourages him to be there because he's wearing clothes that were warm enough that he could handle standing there he doesn't look too enthusiastic about it i shake their hands and i thank them okay the woman with the frying pan is wearing like a baker's outfit so they'll stand guard and everyone else goes into the building where are you going can i say something sure. to the crowd sure okay um what's As is aster giving a speech as well not so much a speech just letting them know some stuff real quick it's just, I'm, i want to do heroism just so that they're confident in everything that's oh you're on. casting heroism okay yeah um, that means they're immune to fear um, if I remember so, correctly. Yes, but I have to roll for the guitar. Ah. <laughs> okay. What was your total? Fun stuff happens when you fail the performance check. So we'll see. This, this could no, be fun. it's enough. It's 18. Okay, yeah, that's definitely enough. Okay, so I, I use heroism and I say to them, People of this new world that we're in, we must be braver than ever before. 
because we're charting territory that is unknown to us. But do not be afraid, for we, heroes of this new world, are going to venture out and find out what is beyond these walls in this fortress. We're going to make this place safe enough for all of you. We're going to find out why there's cows. We're going to protect you from the monsters inside. And you're going to be okay. And don't worry. Whatever comes, we'll be there to keep you safe. All right, there's a polite round of applause. And uh, they all head off to their different uh, destinations. Where are you going? Um, I, I want to follow, watch them settle in. Um, okay. You get them all stationed over at the other building? Uh, I'll point out the water kind of areas. Right. right. Um, yeah, they're all pretty thirsty. Yeah. And uh, also kind of let uh, Olgabar, who I guess is going to be the switch watcher right now, kind of know this is where it is. You know, people know it's there. They don't need to touch it. They shouldn't touch it. Okay. Also, I think there's some sleeping bags over in that. Yeah, room. there's some more bedding and other uh, supplies up in that northeast corner room. So I uh, kind of point that out to people as well. Um, there's a bunch of weaponry. I'm not really worried about people grabbing the weaponry. If they do, they do, I guess. It's not in great shape, most of it. Some of it's okay. There, there doesn't seem to be any civil unrest among everybody, yeah, is there? Yeah, that's right. Everyone at this point is mostly sufficiently worried about their safety that they're not turning on each other. Right. They're too worried about external threats. Okay. So I think, um, uh, have we taken a short rest? No, you never did take that short rest. We, yeah, I would like to go ahead and just, like, can we take a short rest here? Sure. 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 Anyone want to expend hit dice to get some hit points back? I guess maybe Terra? I shall. Okay. Uh, I only need to use one. Okay. So now you're at full? I am. All right. Terra's back up to full hit points, and that means everyone's at full hit points. And if you all take an hour's rest, then you recover any bardic inspiration points or other things right? that you recover on a short rest. During my rest, can I try and get to know some of the other people? Sure. Um, I haven't spent that much time generating them as characters. Um, <laughs> Do we see Nandal? No. Where is that guy? Probably robbing Dead World somewhere. Yeah, yeah you, you can, if you want, you have seen this dwarf before. I mentioned Grothin the Goldfingered, the president of the First Bank. He was, uh, he was one of the fellows that you recognized from inside the um, Glasgow Dead World. Okay, I'll go talk to him. Uh, he's an old fellow, but he looks pretty tough for being a banker. He's already grabbed a weapon. He's grabbed a battle axe. He's one of the guys who's volunteered to stand guard with Olgabar by the switch. Oh, uh, well, I, I, I shake his hand and thank him as well. Oh, no worries, lass. It's my pleasure. This place uh, this is an opportunity for an entrepreneur such as myself. You really see a banking opportunity? Well, not for banking per se, but perhaps there's some other kind of business opportunity here. We'll see. Although it does seem underbanked right now. There, there's, I don't see any banks around here. I don't think this is the epicenter of the city or anything. Uh, you, maybe you're right. But uh, maybe there's something else I can find to do here. But for now, I think you're all right. We need to guard this switch. So that's what I'll do. All right. Uh, well, you find out what's going on out there. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, what, what was his name? His name is Grothan the Goldfinger. G-R-O-T-H-A-N. That's what his his name and his epithet. Grothen the Goldfingered. Does he remember me? Mm, uh, if you tell him you're part of the Dane family, I assume you'll do that? Or do you just want to see if he knows who you are in general? I just wanted to know if he recognized me at no, all. No, he doesn't recognize you in general. Punk. <laughs> 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 anyway, he will now. Anyway, I, so yeah, uh, when it's time to go to the village, I'm ready when everyone is. Can All I right. talk All to right. Athelflad real quick? Sure. Hey, Athelflad. Hey, Astor. How are you? Good. I, I just wanted to comment to you something. Okay. You know, you're an exceptional rogue. Yeah. I look around nervously. <laughs> 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 so, uh, this guy, Nandal, he, you know, rogues have this way with sneaking about and blending into a crowd. It's possible that he might have used some kind of disguise kit, or maybe he has some kind of magical affinity like myself. Oh, no. And used disguise self and is rummaging about with the other civilians pretending to be somebody he's not. Now, that's not to say that is a long shot since that spell can't last forever. Right. But he can always rest in between or move away or separate himself 
to take time to recharge and cast again. Or he could just be an expert, disguise kit individual, and just be using makeup to make himself look like somebody else. Uh-oh. So I just, I'm wary about the civilians. I know I want to trust them, but I am skeptical. I have a skeptical mind. I want to make sure that we're keeping our eye on everything. I just wanted to know your opinion about that. Well, have you, have you friended him? Um... He said he wasn't going to take any drastic action while we had a tentative partnership, but he's been, he disappeared. He hasn't been talking to Ogobar like he said he would, and he's nowhere to be found, so that raises red mm. flags. And we're about to venture out into the wilderness, and I feel like someone needs to know that there might be trouble. Well, definitely, yeah. especially the, the, the two that are guarding. I, I, I think we should make them aware. I mean, I don't know. What if one of the guards is him disguised? Oh. <laughs> I, I shake my hand in the air like, yeah. <laughs> uh, should we let the others know? I know that Tara is talking to the others and trying to get a feel for them. And Paxton is somewhere here <laughs> 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 doing something. That is true. <laughs> We should probably let Tara know and and Paxton and uh, you know uh, maybe Ogobar or and and I and Epilema. I mean, I I think she should be in on it too because you know we just start randomly attacking some some yes, dude. No, you know? we don't want to do that. <laughs> All right, yeah, I I think that's a good plan. All right, so you fill Ogobar and Epilema and some other people in. And Tara mm-hmm. and okay. And All right. All right. So you make everyone aware that this guy named Nondal the Nimble and that he is a thief and oh. he. And he but may be sneaking around? I, yes, but I, I, I tell only Apolima, I only tell Ogilvar, I tell my, my group, and I tell them to keep it between themselves. I see. So I don't want Nandal to know that I'm warning people about right, him. Right, right, right. Okay. Out. And then also, if you tell the masses, and there's going to be a whole bunch of distress. Panic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Tara's response is that he's got to be a real stupid thief to steal anything here when he ain't got nowhere to go. That's true, yeah. but he's an expert thief. I'm assuming he's biding his time. I feel like this Olgabar guy is, uh, he seems pretty with it. He seems, you oh, know, yeah. pretty, pretty powerful and has some leadership skills. And if he wants to be the leader of this group that's staying behind, like, I say let him. Like, we just tell him all that he needs to know about the Switch and about Nandal. And, uh, you know, let him handle that group while we go on to the next thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I just wanted to make everyone aware of that. Yeah, it seems like we need to check the check the town for, yep. I guess, food. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Right? Because w- people don't really have food. All right. Yeah, they got to yep. be getting hungry by now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the water helps, but there isn't really anything to eat. All right, so you uh, head out of, the, um, out of the Hall of Scholars and back to the front gate of this fortress. You've looked at it briefly before. You looked out from one of the towers uh, on the wall before. So you head out the front gate. Is that what you're doing? I would like to know if there are any new gnome footprints. No, there are no new gnome... There are no... That's hard to say. (laughs) There are no new gnome footprints. (laughs) Okay. You can still see that same statue of a gnome is sitting out by that uh, shed. Um, And as you walk to the gate... You can see there. There's still those two gnome statues standing in the square. Actually, one seated. Um, so uh, I guess I'll just uh, tell you what you see as you st- head out through the gate. Unless there's anything else you want to do before you head out. Okay. So that bright yellow ball appears to be continuing to make progress on the horizon. Now it's moved up and to the left a bit. Uh, as you walk out of the fortress and down to the open area around the well between the ruined buildings of the town outside the fortress you immediately notice that the scene appears to have changed somewhat. First, the lighting is different because that ball in the sky is uh, casting light from a higher level uh, than it was before. There are some shadows being cast by it. There are these two gnome statues that are still there, but there is also a figure striding back and forth impatiently in front of the well in this town square. The figure appears to notice you and immediately stops and puts his hands on his hips. He appears to be an elf, He's wearing beautiful, glittering elven chainmail, gray leather boots, a pure white tunic, and a silver circlet on his brow. And his expression is initially irritated, but then he looks kind of relieved. He walks toward, uh, let's see, who's taking the lead here? Maybe Tara? I put my hand on my hips. All right. 
Is Tara taking the lead or who's taking the lead? Who's I, who's I, leading I think, the group out? I think Tara should be leading the okay. group. Okay. Yep. All right. So he walks toward Tara and he bows deeply and clears his throat and says, "Hey dudes, like uh hail and well met or something. <laughs> uh can't thou like uh understandeth me, man?" <laughs> 